Hi again then guys and welcome to the second to last car review already with only the Honda S2000 left to review from the 1.43 update and this one of course because my thoughts are out there already to some degree is definitely the most controversial car and the car that I find the least interesting out of these five vehicles but there are a couple of addendums to that. For one thing, don't worry, we're not going to be discussing whether or not the car is relevant for the entire video. It's something that does need to be addressed, of course, but the fact that I already have to some degree kind of negates that, so we will be objective, so don't worry about that. But also, I did find it very interesting that Gran Turismo themselves put out a community poll on their official YouTube channel asking people what their favourite car was from the 1.43 update. And this one came in a resounding last, <laughs> so it clearly is not just me who isn't particularly interested in this, some would say, needless duplicate. Not so much a duplicate, because of course it's not exactly the same, but it's about as close to it as you can get. The performance is pretty much spot on the same, the name is different, the face is different, so technically there are some differences, but there are with the Clios as well. Doesn't mean that we need two different variants of essentially the same thing. The Porsches are different, as I discussed before, but with all of that out of the way, because we all have our own thoughts on that and you can argue back and forth all day long, but regardless of that, what does the car actually offer? Both in comparison to the Sprinter, but also more importantly on its own, because if you have to automatically compare it to that car all the time, that kind of tells you the answer to the argument. If all you can do is compare it to the Sprinter, that pretty much speaks for itself as to how necessary the car is. So regardless of the Sprinter Truno, what can the Levin do? Is it a good car? Is it something that is good in stock form? Is it only good tuned? What kind of range does it have? Can it, for instance, punch above its weight like the S13 Sylvia can? Well, I'm happy to say that yes, it definitely can. Both this and the Sprinter definitely are far more competitive than they look and far more competitive than the raw power would suggest. And one of the main reasons, of course, is the weight. It's such a lightweight car, this vehicle weighs less than a Fiat Panda 100 HP, which isn't exactly a big heavy car anyway. It weighs 940 kilos, and so that 1.6 liter engine with 127 horsepower, which under most circumstances would be modest at best, it doesn't really need a massive amount of power to already be pretty good as a performance car. Some people rant and rave about the car. As I said though, this is more objective. I'm not a, an initial D super fan or even a, a drifting aficionado or anything like that. I approach it more from the track side of things. What can it do as a race car? What can it do from a competition point of view? And also what can it do on its own as like a time trial car or even just something that you drive for fun, both tuned and stock. From that point of view, it's a car which I would definitely recommend tuning, because although you could say that about all cars to some degree, you can pretty much always make them better, even just a little bit, there are definitely some which really come into the element when you tune them up. And not just for power, for weight as well. If, for instance, the car is already light, as this one is, why not make it even lighter, take it even further? You definitely can do that. And the fact that it's only an N100 means that you do have a ton of range to work with. Most cars can't necessarily go down to N100. If they're JDM icons, they tend to go to, what, N200? Maybe some are close to N100, but not quite. This one already starts in that prime territory. Now, I can't recall exactly what category I was running this one in the video in, but I think it might have been M100 still, maybe just tuned up to like 145 horsepower or so instead with the weight dropped. But even then, just like the Sylvia that we discussed earlier on on the channel, it's a fantastic car through corners. And regardless of if you're discussing the handling or from a drifting point of view as a track car or a street car, under pretty much all of those circumstances, you can consistently say that the handling is, I would argue, the single strongest aspect of the car. It's very well balanced, the driver feedback is really good, and in a funny kind of way, it actually shares a lot in common with the S13 in terms of how it does handle. It's very easy to drive, super beginner friendly, of course it has the same kind of sleeper appeal. As I mentioned in that video though, this one is kind of better known than the S13, even to the average petrol head who maybe isn't into JDM. Chances are they'll recognize this one from the pop culture side of things, whereas the S13, not so much. Now this one, in terms of its upper end potential, doesn't necessarily punch quite as high as a lot of the other JDM cars. It is much, much lower in terms of, for instance, power 
and many of its rivals aren't necessarily in the game, because stuff like RX-7s and Integras and Sylvias, sure, you can put it up against them, but because they're also so good, you might not necessarily win. This isn't Initial D. After all, it's a lot of big, wide-open tracks where power actually is very important. So for a car like this, you really do need to use it where its strengths can be used to their best advantage. In a similar way, funnily enough, to the Mitsubishi GTO, because as I mentioned in that review, it's a car which has a lot to offer, but only in very specific ways. The straight-line performance, for instance, the acceleration, the top speed, the power, the torque, very impressive across the board, it's very easy to drive in comparison to a supercar of a similar power for instance, but you take that thing on a technical circuit and you're going to drop 3 or 4 seconds a lap easily over other cars in the same category, and that's not even fully tuned, that's even like N200, N300. This is the exact opposite, this does not have the straight line power, does not have the straight line performance even when it is tuned, but what it does have is that cornering ability. It's a small car, it's very lightweight, extremely nimble, and although technically it's more of a hatchback coupe, it does handle much more in a hot hatch kind of way, but very much so of its age as well. It comes from a similar era to what would have been like the Peugeot 205 GTIs and the Ford Fiesta XR4Is and those kind of iconic boxy hot hatches. This one isn't quite a traditional hatchback in that sense, it's more of a, as I said, coupe, but it certainly occupies a similar place in terms of how fun it is, and also how much performance it gives you for such a, by today's standards, pathetic, really, amount of power. It has less power than something like a Toyota Starlet Glanzer, so in comparison to even other JDM cars, it seems to be underwhelming but those who know how good it is respect it for that reason. So ultimately my verdict of course factoring in the fact that it is essentially a duplicate or close enough to it, it means that sure I can recommend it just as much as the Sprinter Truna. So pretty much everything that I said in that video will apply to this one as well. It really is just a case of choosing which one you prefer the look of, because in terms of performance, there might be some differences, but they're negligible, really. They're both so similar. The proportions, the weight, the power, virtually the same in most ways, if not the same in some ways. So try it out, see which one you prefer visually, and that's about it. <laughs> Either way, the car does have a lot to offer, but again, just like the Mitsubishi, know when to use it. Don't necessarily try and take on you know, muscle cars or something like that in a straight line, but through corners, you never know, might be worth a look. But overall, that's it for my thoughts and my review. Of course, I will see you guys next time, and for now, as always, thanks for watching.